Bill, thank you very much. And I must say, in all honesty, that uh, I am really proud of the fact that you think of me the many, many things that you've said, not only here probably tonight, but in and around the world, not say just the country, but in and around the world, because I know, too, that you've done as much traveling as I have. And I've traveled throughout 103 different countries in this world, and I've done an awful lot, I feel, when it came to the game of basketball and helping to promote it. In fact, uh, uh, in 1950, we gave the very first basketball clinic in France. And we started from France into Germany and throughout the entire European area, we gave basketball camps. Then from there, we left uh, the following year and going into Australia. And there, they had uh, some game they called it, uh, uh, I forget what kind of, bas it wasn't basketball, but they weren't playing basketball. They had a basket, but you know, they shot, shot, uh, shot uh, balls up there for the uh, uh, as their game. And we gave clinics there in, in Australia. In fact, there were uh, clicks all over the world that we, the Harlem Globetrotters, gave uh, in starting the game of basketball in different countries. Now, I played basketball here in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in this state, first out at Sand Springs, Oklahoma. If you don't know what the location of it, it's 11 miles to the west of, Tul of Tulsa. <laughs> And, and then, then too, of course, basketball at Langston University at the time that I was able to get into college. But now, I had a, I had a, a kind of a rough time getting into college. There at my church in Sand Springs, uh, at the First Baptist Church, they gave out a scholarship every year to the student the graduating that uh, was a member of the, of the church, uh, an amount of money. And I uh, was the one that qualified for that scholarship. And I qualified with, for it mainly because not that I had the best uh, grade points and everything else coming out of high school. And the good factor about it was the fact that I was the only one at the church that, that, that graduated. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't have a problem. <laughs> I didn't have a problem. <laughs> But, but I had a couple of brothers who attended school at Langston University, and I wanted to kind of fall in, in, uh, in their path. So uh, how was I going to get there? But right after church that day, I went up to get the $25, and the, uh, the reverend said, well, no, Marcus, what you'll have to do is get it after you get out to school. You know, that's all right. You know, I got the scholarship. All right, now to get to Langston, 82 miles from where I live, there in Sand Springs. I didn't have the money to get there. I didn't have, uh, I had a few, few coins. I think I say I had something like 35, 36 cents. And, but I stood in front of my house, which was right on the highway, south section line, going, and, and trying to get to Langston and hitchhiking. I caught 16 rides that day to go 82 miles. <laughs> Uh, to go 82 miles. The last two miles were from Coyle, uh, Coyle, Coyle yeah, Oklahoma, into Langston. It was a couple of miles. And the guy that uh, left me off there said, well, Marcus, look, uh, if I wasn't running late for this uh, 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 meeting that I have, I'd take you on out to Langston. But you stand there, somebody will come along and pick you up. Well, I took him his word for it. So I stood there for about uh, 45 minutes hitchhiking trying to get to Langston. I didn't know exactly how far it was. The guy told me about two miles. Then, so shortly thereafter, a horse and wagon came along. And the guy said, say, hey, fellow, where, where are you trying to get to? I said, well, sir, I'm trying to get to Langston. I don't know exactly how far it is. He said, well, just up the road here a couple of miles. Why don't you hop on? I said, OK, I'll hop on. I hopped on and, and uh, rode the two miles. And I get out to, we, he let me off there at the gate. And uh, I said, well, I guess what I'll do is just uh, lollygag along and go on up, up there. And so one of the fellas came by from Seminole, Oklahoma, who I played ball against uh, in, in, in high school. And uh, he was coming in from the, the store. And he said, Marcus, I said, uh, uh, said when would you get here? I said, well, I just got here. I'm trying to get up here to the, to the, uh, to, to the campus. He said, well, come on. 
and uh, I'll show you where to go. I said, yeah, that's where I got to go, to the, uh, to the uh, money room, I called it, the money room. I got there and uh, to get my $25. And the lady said, well, here's what you do, Marcus. You sign on the line right here, which, which was all right with me. I signed on the line right there. And I stood there, and I stood there. And I asked her, I said, well, look, when am I going to get my $25? She said, well, no, you don't get this $25. So you're getting it all right, but it's your, for your tuition for to go. I said, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do now? I'm going to get back home. <laughs> so, so I remember. I remember this guy uh, who had worked for my brother on the yard out of Langston, on the yard cutting grass, and his name was Uncle Bill. I said, well, could you tell me, please, where Uncle Bill is? <laughs> he said, Uncle Bill? I said, yes. I said, he's the fellow that takes care of that. She said, oh, okay. So she told me where Uncle Bill was. So I went over and introduced myself to him. I told him, Marcus Haynes. He said, oh, yeah, you had a, a brother that worked for me. I said, that's what I come to, uh, to uh, that's what I was looking for you for. I want to work because I can't get back home. He said, well, why don't, why don't you go into college? I said, well, I'll go to college if I can get some work. He said, well, come on, you're working for me now. So he put me on the, on the, uh, on the yard, wanted to know if I could uh, do what, how to push a lawnmower, to push lawnmowers, and have these motor things during those years. <laughs> but at any rate, he's one, he said, do you know anything about fixing? I said, yeah, I can fix it. I can take it off and take it loose and put it all back together. He said, well, you're my man. You take, I got five out there. You fix those, come back. <laughs> all right, I worked for him for just a short while. And Zip Gales, who was a coach out at Langston, he didn't do any recruiting. He was, a, he was a coach, basketball coach. And he saw me, and he recognized, said, well, look, aren't you the guy that played for Sand Springs? I said, yes, sir. He said, you're the guy that played in uh, at Tuskegee, Alabama, and, uh, and the uh, all uh, the national black school uh, 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 tournament? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, why don't you come on out here and let me take, see you take a few shots and run around the court there for a while. I said, uh, well, okay. So he gave me a pair of sneakers and some pants to put on and, and just a jersey to put on. You know, I'm a big college player now. I haven't bounced the ball at all. And I said, well, what do you want me to do now, sir? Well, I just want you to get there and run a little bit and shoot. I said, he said, well, what you do first? You start running around the court. I said, well, okay. He said, take a few laps around the court. So I took some laps around. I took about 15 laps around the court. And he stood there watching me. He said, well, take a few more. And I kept running and running. Hey, guess what? I got tired. I said, can I shoot a little bit? <laughs> but uh, I, had a, I had a great time. And fortunately, we ended up with a great team out at Langston. We played, uh, we had, uh, out of 113 games, we, w we won 100 of them. We lost three games my freshman year, and then we went undefeated the last three years. And I ended up uh, making uh, the All-American Black College team uh, for that year. And it was just a great thing. But I, I enjoyed it all. And I think I played, long I played basketball longer than anybody ever even attempted to play the game of basketball. I, I played for the Globe Trotters from 1946 to, to 53, and then I played for the Magicians from late 53 until 98. I didn't retire until 98, so I played professional basketball from 1946 to 1998. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I played it in Chautauqua, Kansas, and I was happy to play it. Nobody else had played that long, and I don't think anybody else ever will. But at any rate, I had a great life, a great life in the, in the basketball world. I just had a great life in the world. I can go just about any place in this world, and there's somebody who I know, and I still stay in car correspondence with a lot of people throughout this country. But, you know, it's been a great life for me. I'm still living. I'm going to live a lot longer, and I uh, thank God for all of it. Thank you.